Surf 102.5 Podcast. It was 2018 when 12 young footballers and their coach, known as the Wild Boars, became trapped in the Tamluang Cave near Chiang Rai. The rescue operation that followed was remarkable. Two people involved in the planning and subsequent rescue are Vern Unsworth, a leading British diver and resident in Thailand, and Senator Wirasak Kausarat. I asked Kung Wirasak about his early days as a politician. If you recall the late Prime Minister Banhan Silapa Acha, I was his secretary on international affairs, and then I served the former Prime Minister Chat Chai. Chat Chai Chunawan? Chunawan, yes. Mm. I was at his uh, policy advisor uh, team during his time. So you've really had quite a career here, haven't you? (laughs) Accidentally. And now, what is your role now? I'm now a senator in the Thai parliament. What do you actually have to do as a senator? What (laughs) what kind of a job is that? Ah, okay. Well, uh, basically, many of the Thai would understand it as an upper house where we review all the bills that come from the lower house. Yes. Uh, That's one part of the job. The other part is that when there will be a joint session sitting between both house to go through the new draft that proposed by the government saying, claiming that it is a revolutionary kind of uh, bills, then the both house sit together. That's the second issue. The third is that we overlook overseeing the government practice in day-to-day operation as well. So we, we all... 250 of us will be yes. divided into 27 different group of standing committee. I am now the vice chair of the Committee on Environment. Well, that's, that's quite an important role, isn't that it? Is. I didn't really want to go down there, but, but environment is such a strong subject. And, yes. And uh, such a hot subject now. And we, use, we, we must make a big effort out of this uh, window of golden opportunity of COVID-19 that came in and that less traveling has been uh, happening. So the return of the natural resource uh, has been witnessed. And we would like to continue on talking to the local people and also the administrations of how do we keep it that way when the real traffic returns. The idea of self-sufficiency is really quite important, isn't it? Very important, yes. And, and that's something that His Late Majesty the King was, was really interested in and, and really tried to inform people about. That's right. So is this something that you're doing as well? As well, yes. Uh, I, ha- I happen to be the first one writing in the first very book explaining about uh, the new theory of the sufficient economy that His Majesty invented uh, in, back in 1997. And that was the first book came out. And uh, I went down into the rice paddy field and worked with a few other vocational school in areas yes. uh, to, to try to practice his theory of 30, 30, 30 percent of the land to be uh, used differently and then another 10 percent of the land to make it a total 100, 100 to be yeah. self-sufficient mm. for farmers' uh, normal life. And, and that's how I, I got involved, and I start uh, heavily involved in those kind of activities and also with running my own life under this philosophy since then until yeah. now. We're here really today to look back a couple of years yes. to the incredible times when those boys were stuck in the cave in Chiang Rai. And I know you were really involved in, in the rescue and, and in some of the decision-making what was your role? Were you the governor up in Chiang Rai at that no, time? No, I was the minister right. of tourism and sports at that time. Okay. Uh, and uh, I was not asked to be there. I was not meant to be there. It just happened that in my normal habit, when I, I used to have a house at a beach house in Pranburi. Okay. And so I've been climbing a lot of uh, rocks in, in that area, going to cave. I did... Uh, <laughs> feel that with the complexity issue happening up north in Chiang Rai during the cave rescue, they haven't found the kids just yet. Mm. But they believe that the, the kids probably are still stuck somewhere deep inside the cave. Therefore, my wife and I watched on the television that one night and seeing that the Thai Navy SEAL commander said that he, with the flood having in the 
cave right then, yeah. they have to cease the operation for a while. I start to cu get a curiosity out of it, saying that, well, maybe if I can see, get to see the real terrain, I might come up with some idea uh, and bring in some good supporting policy for the rescue. Therefore, I flow myself into the cave where I find out that though I have been in quite a few caves, but never before. Not that like I, this. Not right. like this. So deep into the earth, like three kilometers or something, and uh, the terrain inside is just more than anyone can imagine. Yes. And no one at that time never have any imagined that uh, there will be current running in the cave. System. Strong, strong current. Strong yes. current with mm. sand and everything. Uh, the visibility is zero. Uh, but then I happen to be there uh, at the same time as the prime minister representative who happened to be former commander in chief of the Thai army. Okay. Uh, who then was, was the minister of interior. He's still the minister of interior right now. Uh, so he looked at me uh, with a glance at the in front of the cave. I was not invited. And so he asked me quietly, what are you doing here? I said, well, sir, I figure that the, the victim of this issue are uh, soccer team. So they are matched with my uh, uh, part uh, sports, of the sports, part of the sports yes, uh, exactly. portfolio. And the place where they're stuck is, a, is a, a place where people come and have a relaxation. For tourism. For tourism, yes. So tourism and sports. I see if I can be of any help. He said, good that you are here. And uh, later on, he, keeps, he kept telling people that he feel uh, happy that I was there yes. with him at yeah. the time when Mr. Werns Anwes, who came into the room at the end of the day that he and I, uh, Mr. Fintiri and I, was about to leave the, the cave you were just to, about to, to come leave back. So is this how you and Vern met each other? Yes. In fact, I, I spot him first. Uh, he was talking to some people outside of the cave and I kind of quietly sneaking to listening to what he was saying mm. because I was wondering of what is this Farang uh, doing, doing yeah. in front of this cave where nobody get any access into but he got all wet and uh, you know in his green long sleeve shirt pulled over and uh, he has a rope around his uh, waist and uh, he seems to know what he's doing and uh, I didn't quite understand the the thing he was explaining to the, uh, the person who was having conversation with him, but I was impressed that at least we have someone who who understands something about what have inside yes. in the cave. I came back to the war room, if you would like, and uh, <laughs> was it like a war room? Yeah, pretty a lot, much. A lot, a lot of people in there. Mostly general, okay. <laughs> colonel, captain, and people with ranking, uh, governors, and Ooh, all kind yeah. of. Uh, and every major uh, department in the interior ministry were all there. The entourage were all there. Remarkable. I, I was the only one from, from nowhere, uh, listening, keep myself quiet for the whole part of the, the day, until Kun Werns show up. And uh, though the Minister of Interior understand his English, but not all the rest in mm. the war, war room though. Yes, language must have been a bit of a challenge. It has been a challenge at that time. Uh, but in any case, if the, if the big boss at that time understand the purpose of his proposal of bringing, suggesting that uh, Thailand would bring in the three best case driver in the world yeah. uh, to help this rescue mm. or to search first. We don't even know if the kids are still alive or where they are about. Mm. And the Minister of Interior looked at me in the eyes and I kind of nod my head that I think that we don't get much progress today. We are going to have to go to anything out of the box now. Then Kun Werns pulled out a piece of small paper that has been kept in his uh, lower pocket in yeah. this trouser for a couple of days. It's all soaked and wet and uh, a little mud at, at it. And he said he has been keeping it to himself for a couple of days now, waiting to see if who's the right person to give it to. And then he gave it to the Minister of Interior. Minister of Interior looked at uh, what he suggests. And uh, he sent a piece of paper to me and asked me to do something about it. And I, I said, OK, then oh, we are going to officially invite the three person 
to come to Thailand to help our boys. Right. And that's why when I asked Kun Wern because that Wern was a resident in you know up in yes, this area. Yes. He has been having a lot of knowledge about this cave right. at least for eight years. He has been walking in and out uh, exploring this cave which is an activity that not too many Thais uh, has ever been encountered with. So, and he also said to us that one of the three best divers, uh, cave divers, were here in this same cave uh, a couple of weeks before. Uh, so, although it, when it was very dry, mm. uh, but it's going to be very helpful to have someone who understand the terrain of that complexity of the cave system yes. to be there. So I asked Kun Wern, have you been in contact with them lately? He said, yes. Can you call them up right now? And he said, yes. So he did. And then he called the person up. It was uh, Rob Harper. And the uh, time difference between Thailand and, and London yeah, is six, yeah. six hours uh, <laughs> after us. So it was almost seven o'clock at night in, at, in front of the cave. Right. So I figured out that uh, probably the person on the other side of the line would probably have just finished his lunch. Uh, right. Never expect that when he turned <laughs> the phone to me uh, in the FaceTime. But then his wife uh, brought the phone to him in his bedroom. So I figured, okay, so he's uh, in the bedroom, uh, shirtless. <laughs> probably just woke up, him so up. So you, you basically did a FaceTime with somebody who's almost in bed, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I. <laughs> I feel very sorry. I, I feel okay. inappropriate for waking someone up yeah. from the other side of the world. But I said, uh, sir, I'm Minister of Tourism and Sports. I'm here with the Minister of Interior who is representing our Thai Prime Minister. Yeah. Uh, we would like to ask if you have been following with the uh, issue happening with the kids stuck in the cave in Thailand, yes. Chiang Rai. He said, yes. yes. And I said, uh, with the introduction of Werns Unworth, uh, one of your colleagues said that uh, you might have the ability to help us out here if it is possible that I am now formally, officially ask you that you come to help our kid. This is an invitation. He said, yes. And I said, sir, it's, uh, we are running against time now. Mm. Uh, how soon can we get you here? Uh, right away he said, well, how soon, minister, can you uh, give us the, the, the flight tickets? I said, oh, then... Uh, I don't know, we never do did this, this before, mm. but don't worry, get your gear, call your friends, haul up to the airport, and the rest, I will get it done. Sort it out, yeah. Yeah. And uh, didn't realize that in the next 24 hours, we will successfully bring these two great gentlemen right in front of the, of the cave. I would like to also add here that I, wa I was thinking that with any person flying halfway across the world to come to a place where it's dark and rain, uh, he must have been tired. He might not have enough time to rest. So I was talking to my people at Chiang Rai on the ground saying that, well, when they arrive, make sure that you help them out of the airport as soon as possible because they are coming with about 100 kilos of uh, equipments, special equipments, and uh, make sure that you bring them to a good rest. But no, they went to the front of the cave and start diving right away. Immediately. Immediately, right. yes. Yeah. And they were gone into the dark water for another three, four hours. Amazing. Uh, Amazing. The time when he arrived was exactly 24 hours later after we hung up the phone. The phone. He, they went into the cave and never come out until half past midnight. Just to say that they went to the way that they want to search where all of our people never get to. Mm. Because mm. when you get to the Sam Yak, the dry section, yes. uh, we all turn left to try to find the kids. But we did never turn right on that corner because uh, the current coming from that corner was strong. Yeah. But that was what they did for the first day. So mm. I really That's admire them. Yeah. But having said this, I would say that Wern is the lighthouse of this whole operation. Without him uh, coming in, uh, helping the first group of rescue group in the cave, understanding the cave system, and knows the right person to talk to, uh, both internationally and also to the domestic uh, administration, we never get to the right place we have now. Well, here with me is Vern Unsworth. What were the conditions like when you first had a look in there, in the cave, at around the time they, that, they, that they, you learned that 
the boys were trying. Well, the, the actual first day, the 24th, uh, Sam, Samyek was, um, it was very noisy. It was a very noisy area because, the, you know, the flood water from the north, from Monk series, was was getting um, stronger and stronger as the hours went by. So it mm. was it was quite noisy. It was, um, but then what a lot of people don't realise is that 300 metres further back from Samyek, there was another passage that was bringing in a, a huge amount of water. And um, this over two or three days was creating a long, deep pool. So over the hours it was getting longer, it was getting deeper. And so as, as I went in and out, I just placed a marker just to just to check what was happening with the water level uh, because one one thing that I certainly was aware of was not having our escape route cut off exactly that, that would yes. have been that would have been that would have uh, been that would have been uh, tragic perhaps. tragic yes so that that was part of what was happening and then you really had several options really to decide where were these boys actually trapped? I mean, how did you actually well, I, I, decide on the correct? I mean, I thought they would be. I thought they would be at Pattaya Beach, but in actual fact, they were slightly further on. Right. Because Pattaya Beach is a big area within uh, the cave. Within right. the cave. So, uh, depending on where you are uh, within that area, then then they would have been safe. For example, at the beginning of Pattaya Beach is quite big. As you move further on, it gets it gets lower. But they, they were they were actually in an area that uh, they, they couldn't have been in a better place mm. really uh, at the end of the day if I had to if I had to choose an area myself that's that's where I would that's where, where, that's where I would sit yeah. out yeah so Kochek did uh, remarkably well in in finding a place that was as comfortable as it was, was going to be was it relatively dry for them or not yeah i mean that that, that whole uh, chamber area, the the Avon or wild boar Avon, as I call it. It was it's mm. it's as dry as it's going to be. Yeah. You're going to get some uh, seepage from the roof in those conditions because you know the mountains become a sponge. So logically, you're going to get something's going to get. Yeah, through. it's yeah. it's yeah. it's going to happen. So, but, it was but relatively I, okay. I think. Yeah. But as the time went on, and as I mentioned before. Uh, once the Navy SEALs arrived, you know we we were helping the Navy SEALs. Um, and and you, you could see the concern in Captain Anand's eyes. You know, he had concerns for his men, which was only right. Um, you know, they, they were they were doing a job. And um, but as as time went on, um, you know, decisions had to be made. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because th there would never be a sort of a right time and a wrong time. But I, I think what we decided on, on that evening of the 26th was the right time. Um, as I said, it was a brave call. You know, they, they were relying totally on, on, my, on my information. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really know what the, uh, what the decision was going to be. But I knew that, um, you know, the decision that was taken was the right decision at the time. But there were still no guarantees. Mm. I was still mm. convinced that, that, that Rick and John would find the boys, but it's what condition they would find them in. Um, Who did find the boys? John, John and Rick. The world really saw a video of the boys sitting there, yeah, and yeah. somebody. And was that John talking to them in that video? There was John. There was John was on the news. John was the main one talking to them. Right. If you hear uh, John. John basically shouts, uh, how many of you? Yes. But Rick, Rick had had the presence of mind to count them coming down the slope. And you hear Rick in the background saying, they're all alive. So, I mean, that's, that shows the, the, the power of mm. having done a, you know, a, 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 a difficult of, dive. Yeah. And they still, he still had the presence to count them coming down the slope. Mm. Um, I mean, that, that, that video will... It's, it's an iconic video now. What were the main challenges of bringing the boys out? Just the distance underwater. Just the, 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 the actual distance underwater. And what we, what we have to remember is that on the 28th of June, 
which again uh, helped helped John and Rick assess what was going to need to be done. On the 28th of June, there was four guys rescued from Chamber Three. They'd been, you know, when we were really? in there, when we were in there on the 27th, which is when they arrived, yeah. the the connecting chamber between Chamber Two and Chamber Three, that literally was filling up in front of our eyes. Rob had disappeared into Chamber Three, but it was so noisy, and we just politely told him to get back. Mm. And he was within a, a couple of inches of the airspace disappearing. What we didn't realise was that there were still four people in that chamber that evening. We didn't realise it. So John and Rick entered the cave the next morning. So they've not had much sleep, as yeah. <laughs> the minister knows. They, they, they were we were in a uh, they were in a small resort area. We picked them up at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, got them got them to the dive start point, which at this time now was a long way back. Mm. It wasn't that far inside the the entrance chamber by now. And um, they rescued four guys. They they rescued the four water management guys. So there was three there was three small dives: five meters, eleven meters, and seven meters. But all four of them, all adults, they all panicked. And that that gave John and uh, Rick the the information they needed when they found the boys to say, well, they're not going to come out under normal dive conditions. No, they're going they're to no. need some, they're going to need some form of um, sedation because, you know, the, 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 the length of dive that, that was needed, you know, we're talking uh, 1. 1. 1.5 kilometers, something like that. Not yeah. all, not all underwater. Some of it was, was above, but it, the, the conditions were such that they 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 had to stop the boys panicking, and I'm that was the, that was the main that was the main criteria. I know in the media there was a lot of apprehension about giving uh, some sort of sedative to the boys. Correct. Was that, was that a real concern? Yeah, I, I you know we, we uh, even, even uh, Doc Harry the um, the anaesthetist and diver he had his concerns. We all had our concerns because there was no. There was no guarantees, but it, out of the options that we had, for me, it was the only option. As I said at the time, so one, way, one way in, one way out. And, and that make, making the t decision wasn't easy, um, but it, you know, at the end of the day, we, we had to take that option. How did this process actually develop? Did somebody go in and give them some sort of anaesthetic and then put a face mask on and dive out? I mean, how, how was the process? Well, that's, actually li that's, literally, that's literally what happened. Every, all literally. the three days, four, yeah. four, four, five. So Doc Harry would get there, he'd prepare the boys, mm. um, and then they'd be brought out, the four of them would be brought out by Rick, John, Jason, and Chris. And, and um, you know, when you get four out of four the first day, you think, wow. That's, you know, because we... We, we had to give uh, the officials, you know, the, uh, you know, a, a sort of a best case scenario. Yeah. You know, we, we, we obviously thought there would be a an attrition rate, but that would be that would be far better than leaving them in for five or six months. Um, you know, there, there was there was just no no way that they would survive for five or six months. No, there. and there was uh, talk of doing that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there was. Yeah. It, it was thankfully it was. Uh, you know, the dive plan was, was given the green light, which mm. is what we wanted. Mm. You know, Doc Harry was always apprehensive about getting them out. You know, the, 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 there was a long way underwater. You know, you only, only had to break the seal on the, on the full face mask. That would have been in serious trouble. And that, trouble, that would yeah. have been in yeah. serious trouble. Yeah. So yeah. they had all these, but the, the, the sedation was, for me, was the right thing to do, yeah. 100%. So if you're sedating someone like that, then one of you has to pull the boys through, I guess, literally. They just carry, they, well, they carried them literally like a shopping bag. Oh, really? Okay. Just pull them, pull, drag them through. Well, it, there, was a, yeah. there was a harness yes. around their, their body. Okay. So it was a bit like a shopping bag. If you okay. can imagine a, a patient in a shopping bag okay. at, at Tesco's so or, or Macro or somewhere like that, like that. That, that, that literally was yeah. it. And they, they were carried 
underneath the diver, right. yeah. underneath here, so the, their head would be about here, yeah, on, okay. on the torso, so that wow. the diver's head, if there was going to, if it was going to hit anything, it would hit their head first. So it would give the the child as Some much protection. as much yeah. protection as possible. And you, and of course, you're working in nil vis conditions. And what were the temperatures like? Cold. Yeah. Very cold. You know, they're 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 outside they're outside court. Their hands and their feet. You know, when we when we took over from chamber three through to the entrance, and they were checked over several times en route. So they they were really well looked after. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, as yeah. as patients go, they they were they were well looked after Good. from chamber yeah. three, chamber two. They were, they were checked twice in chamber two, then they were checked before they, they made the journey out. So they, they, were, um, they were well looked after, you know, we had a- That's we remarkable. Had group, we had groups of paramedics, yeah. you know, with the US Air Force guys. You had US Air Force here as well? I was well. the one who called them in. Did you? Mm. Remarkable. Yeah. 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 They, they, were, um, they were fantastic in, you know, the, the, the planning side of, of the operation. Once they got them out. Very yeah. right. Very focused. Uh, yeah. very calm. And and that was the main thing with the, the three days of the rescue. Nothing changed. Nothing changed from day one. What we did on the first day, we did on the second day and we did on the third day. The only difference on the third day was uh, we had concerns about the, the water levels because it had rained it rained most of the night before and, and into the morning. So the levels were rising. So the, le the levels were rising, yes. and um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it proves that the uh, the dive plan and the sedation and everything that went with it was was the right plan. Mm. It was a blueprint. This really was a real high point in in your own life and in your own profession. How have things changed for you since? No, 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 no real change. I, I, I said in an interview, uh, really, you know, it, it's changed a lot of people's lives, but you don't, you don't go out to make those changes. The changes come along, and I, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same person. I'm, the, I'm no, I'm no yeah. different. Yeah. And you know, the people had important decisions to make. I, I, I looked at this uh, rescue as a big jigsaw. You know, and, the, and the, the pieces started to come together and certain decisions were made, certain things happened. Some of the things happened by accident, some happened by coincidence, and it, it all eventually came together. Came together. Yeah. And <laughs> I know you've been recognised for your work up there in Thailand. Tell me a little bit about that. The, uh, I, there's, there's quite a few people were recognised and it's, it's obviously yes. very... You know, it's very, uh, very humble. Um, so I, I've received the uh, Knight Commander, which um, you know it's you, you don't you don't expect to go into a rescue to for, for awards. No, no. It's it's not it's not there. You you know it's it's not part of the, it's not part of the no. the remit. Got what it. what happens afterwards, you you've got no <laughs> control in. But it's nice to be recognised. Um, I think anybody looking at the the 18 days would, you know, when you have 12 children and a coach involved, the 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 situation just gripped the world. And, and as we we said, there was 24 countries involved. That's unheard of. But it was because of two things. One, it involved 12 boys and and a coach. And the second thing, it was Thailand. Very special. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you ever get tired of telling your story? Um, yes and no. I think I think it's important that we don't we don't forget it. You know, this things. You know, this thing. This happened. It was the biggest cave rescue ever. Not just in terms of numbers of rescuers or volunteers, equipment. The amount of equipment was huge. I mean, we're talking of nearly 400 air dive cylinders inside the cave at any one time. Huge amount of equipment, pumping equipment, 
power cables. That power cable is, is still in the cave. Yes. Hey, you organized the electricity, didn't you, for <laughs> yes. uh, to give them some power and get lighting in there? I'm glad I did that. I didn't know that it would, would, would be meant so much. But isn't it nice to have you know, a worldwide high-profile story that's actually good news? You know, I mean, that's it a It makes a change that it's good news, for. doesn't it? There was, there was other things happening whilst on the rescue. You know, we had the tragic boat disaster in, 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 in Phuket where 47... 47, yeah, you had to fly down there. You, you know, you spent two or three days down there, if I remember. People yeah. didn't turn their TVs off no. for 18 days. Exactly. And I think it's remarkable how that, and I'm really pleased that you've been able to keep the story alive and fresh in people's minds. I think, with, I think with the eSound project that what Will has done, and, and you know, he's done, the, he's done the video recordings and the music recordings previously with heroes of Thailand, Thailand Amazing Thailand, the Yellow Mountain and he's got his you know that they, they they all they all make sense. Vernon Onsworth, I'd just like to say thank you so much for your time today. Pleasure. Terrific to hear the story. It's good to uh, good to talk. Surf 102.5 podcast.